Listen up. The following video is an aural essay. We recommend listening with a pair of headphones or turning your speakers up. Furthermore, some of the examples contain profanity and sh** which may not be appropriate for younger audiences. Whew, okay. We often think of film as a visual medium, so we can overlook how much they communicate through sound. Sound is great at building, extending, and transforming what's on screen. Sound shapes what you see, and what you think you see. In other words, things don't actually have to be on screen to be part of the story. This is what we call off-screen sound. It provides information and helps build the world outside the frame. So what exactly is an off-screen sound? Hey, Peter, man! Check out Channel 9, check out this chick! Damn it! Lawrence, can't you just pretend like we can't hear each other through the wall? It's a sound that the characters in the movie can hear, but we the audience aren't directly shown. What might surprise you is almost all these sounds don't actually exist on set and are purposefully added in post to make the world feel real. Here's another example. We see the head fall, but it's the sound that tells us how expansive the space really is. So now that you know what off-screen sound is, let's explore some of the ways it can be used. So let's talk about world building. These are the sounds that tell you where the story takes place, what the place is like, and what exists within it. In Stand By Me, all the creatures are off-screen. The animals and crickets aren't really there. I just want to see it. I just want to see what it looks like. I just see bald-headed Christ. This is a set but sound adds in the street below. Here, the street is real, but sound extends the city up to the apartments above. Characters react to off-screen sounds all the time. Provoking a response. Okay, you finished now, right? Pushing the characters to action. Put the candle back. When characters act and react, the story moves forward. All right, I think I have it figured out now. That means off-screen sound can often be the main instigator for story progression. Whether a character is hunting someone... He's close, man. He's real close. or being hunted by something else. It's moving. It's circling us. Ah, oh, fuck. So while these off-screen sounds are moving the story forward, they're also telling us how to feel. Horror films are full of monsters that go unseen, creating tension and fear.
But off-screen sounds can also be funny. They can be used as a punchline. They can also affect the tone of a scene in a more nuanced way. There are things in any city. Subway. It'll go away in a minute. Real estate guy. Here, the passing subway not only tells us that this apartment's in a bad part of town, but it also sets up a moment with our characters. It's a humorous interruption, a moment of levity. But in The Godfather, the same kind of sound is used to very different effect. When there's no picture at all, the audience relies entirely on sound to interpret the story. What they hear not only defines the tone and the environment, but also conveys the action itself. Here are two scenes where we see nothing but black. Now here's a comedy. Whoa. Both are telling you what's happening, without actually showing the action. What I hope you take away from this video is that off-screen sound unlocks a whole range of creative opportunities making us believe something's real, even if it isn't. And that's the very essence of what filmmaking is, creating an illusion. And that illusion expands well beyond the corners of the frame. Thanks for listening. Perfect.